July the 17th, 1910, train number 111 left Louisville, Kentucky, and he first called, he called the North Flagman, something like this. Flagman gave him the highball signal, and he asked him back with two short blasts. Train leaving the yard. Next word. 
broke before eleven. The people there were sight to see. They hung Tommy Joe on the dogwood tree. Fathers and mothers, take warning from me. Never leave your children by the self you see. Take them with you wherever you go. And remember the crime of Tom and Joe.
If I could write a letter today, this is the way that I would want to write it. Saturday, July 17th, 1971. Dear J.E., the weather is very pretty today and there's a nice breeze blowing through the trees. I've been busy this morning mowing and cleaning the yard. Just had dinner and was sitting out under the shade tree thinking about you. As you know, tomorrow the 18th was to be the big day for your birthday dinner we reminded you of several weeks ago. Mrs. Maynard told me how happy you were to see the wife and maid drop in to remind you. She also told us how enthused you were and could hardly wait. And I remember you saying, boy, I hope that we have a big crowd this year. I just can't make myself realize that you're not with us anymore. And I talked with Mrs. Maynard on the phone last night, and she's doing fine. I told her that I couldn't believe that you were gone, and she said that she could hardly believe it either, and it seemed that she could see you coming out of the little record shop door. J.E., as you know, for a long, long time, you and I were the very closest of friends and had many good times together. I enjoyed working with you on the radio and on stage, and what a pleasure it was in the last days to get with you and talk about the good times that we had had. The records that we made together will always be most high in my treasure. The song that I wrote about you, The Ballad of J.E. Maynard, as you know, we had plans to do it over again, but I'm going to release it as it is. I can remember you asking me several times, A.P., what are we going to put on the other side? I told you I didn't know, and I really didn't either. I'm so glad, J.E., that one evening you came to me and asked me to take you to Nashville, Tennessee, the time that you were recognized in the Country Music Hall of Fame. My wife and I often get together and talk about what a nice time we had and how nice everyone was, especially Mrs. Joe Walker and Mr. Grant Turner. They made us feel so welcome. I could go on and on with this letter, but I must close now. May I take this opportunity, J.E., to thank you so much for everything. And when heaven's gates swing open wide for me, your smiling face I'm longing to see. Mountaineer joining you 
Open the door and let us in And we want to come again How do you do, everybody? How do you do?
Ladies and gentlemen, we now present to you a tape recording of yours truly, E.P. Williams, along with J.E. Minor. We're just here at the general store having a little conversation, aren't we, J.E.? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you one thing, Jay. You remember when we were playing over here in Charlotte, North Carolina, here a few years ago, uh, you buying those uh, cheese, you know, and a box of crackers, and we'd be going down the road somewhere to play. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that a lot when I get around the old general store. Yeah. We had a time over at WSOC over there. Oh, we sure oh, did. We did. Yes, sir. We got a lot of mail over there, too. Yeah, we it? did. Yes, sir. Well, we had so much, I just had to put you to reading the mail. Yeah, we, we, we really got the mail over there, and I enjoyed it, too. We've had some good shows, too, you know? Yeah, we did. I know one time we went over here at this Wesley Chapel School and couldn't get them in. About half of them went home, didn't we? Yeah. We had, uh, in fact, we'd have just knew it in time. We could have played a double show that night, but uh, over half of them had done gone before we knew about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That school burned down over there. That's what I hear. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh-huh. We had but, a lot of friends over there. But when we went back on our second show over there, we still had a good crowd. Yeah, we? that's we a back, big one. That's school school. Yeah, we went back over there about a month after that, wasn't it? Yeah. After the first show, wasn't it? We really had a good time. Jay, uh, see, you got one of the old graphophones sitting over there. You know, Don Tucker and I, we talked a lot about the old graphophone and uh, when he used to play some of your records. Uh, the old graphophone over there, J.E., uh, we, uh, Don and I, we were talking about it, and uh, how long have you had that? Well, uh, me and my wife bought that graphophone, the uh, EP, in 1923, I believe it was, and we've heard some lots of good records played over that thing right over there. Yeah, you bet. They don't make that kind of record anymore, though. No, they still got some good ones, but uh, the record that uh, they used on that was altogether a... Uh, uh, what I'd say a tougher record because the uh, the uh, pickup arm is much heavier on that than it is on the newer models now. It, yeah, and the record was a whole lot thicker than these is now yeah. too. In uh, other words, I just think it's a straight out better record. Yeah. Well, uh, that's why I say that there was better material. Actually, it had to be uh, to uh, set that heavy. Uh, pickup arm on there. It, uh, if you had put that weight on one of the newer records, it just wouldn't last any time. No, they cut it too, wouldn't it? <laughs> it probably would. <could. laughs> you know, I've got two of those things at home myself, two of the old graphophones, and uh, I, I would, I just wouldn't take anything for them. Oh, I don't, uh, I ain't getting over, but I've got it sitting out here in, uh, in the car shed, which I call my studio. I've got pictures all over the wall here, everybody, and I just call this my studio out mm -hmm. here, and uh, and uh, I just let it sit out there and look at it. Yeah, well, that's good. It, it really looks nice sitting over there. And talking about the pictures over here, J.E., uh, I see you got a fellow standing over there with the uh, razor blade in his hand. He looked like he's fixing to cut somebody's throat. Who is that? That's Reed Sumters, one of the three tobacco tags. Is that right? Where's yeah. he from, uh, J.E.? They're he's from Gastonia. Gastonia, uh, and he was one of the old original black uh, tobacco tags, That's right, right yeah. And uh, is he still living, J.E.? I don't know. I haven't heard them boys in 15 years. I don't is that know. right? Some of the fellas, though, that get scattered out over the country, it's hard to keep up with them. You said Daddy John Love had passed away. How long has that been? About uh, it's been about four years ago. About four years ago. That's something we didn't know uh, about him until somebody wrote in or called in at the station there from Tucker Junction one night and asked me about it, and I told her I didn't know, but I would ask you. And uh, I see you got some more. Now, these pictures down here that uh, were made when I was working with you over at uh, Charlotte, wasn't it? Yeah. That's uh, John Key and uh, Vance Farrell. Where are those boys at now? They uh, still yeah. around? Vance Farrell lives right over here, just in Holland distance to me, and John Key still lives uh, back over here on the, uh, uh, I forget the name of the road anyway, it's uh, right over from my house. It ain't very far over there. Uh-huh. I see you got a larger picture up there, J.E., uh, uh, that uh, looked like the old Dominion Barn Dance or either the Grand Ole Opry. Where was that made at? No, that was made, uh, that was made over here at uh, Charlotte, WT in Charlotte, way back then when we was uh, running that uh, barn dance over at WT. Is that right? Old man J.W. Fincher was handling it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that, uh, that, but I didn't remember, in other words, I didn't know where the picture was made, but it, it does look uh, quite a bit like uh, some of the stars, you know, fixed up at the Grand Ole Opry. Uh -huh. And uh, they did have, at that time, I remember, a good show on, uh, over here at Charlotte. And uh, the other picture back there, that was a re more recent picture over there, too, wasn't it? Who is that? Is this no over on top? Mm -hmm. Well, that top one, Your Honor, uh, up that right side of me is Price Honors. Next in there, me got the fiddling down under there is uh, Mitchell Parker. And on this side of him is Reed Sumter, two boys from, uh, from down here around Bisco. Yeah. 
Well, that's a good picture. They're all good, J.E., and I especially like that one down there where they uh, got the old house, you know, sitting under the big tree. It looks more like a, uh, maybe a white oak tree with the small leaves there. And then you can see somebody over there with a the fiddle, we might say, and uh, another fella bent over there and another guy after him with a pitchfork. That's, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too bad we're not on television so we can... Uh, let the folks out yeah. there in Radio Land see that is. Well, that note on the end there with the fiddle is Steve Ledford, and that one down there is Jay Hughes. Boys come to town At the old general store They gather 